Hello everyone, good to see you again. I hope all you are doing very well. In this video, I'm going to talk about another important quasi experimental method for causal inference regression discontinuity. Before you start, don't forget to check out our course website for if there are readings and videos required for this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to start with two important notions in the regression discontinuity method, cutoffs and a jump. Then I'm going to explain the basic structure of the regression discontinuity design for causal inference, mainly focusing on a sharp regression discontinuity design, which can be simply implemented through a linear regression. The key identification assumption of a regression discontinuity design is the continuity assumption. So I'm going to explain how the continuity assumption works to identify a causal effect through a regression discontinuity design. In addition, there is another important assumption in interpretation of the causal effect in a regression discontinuity design, no manipulation assumptions. It is a collection of underlying assumptions and must hold to ensure the causal inference through a regression discontinuity design. And I'm going to introduce a simple falsification test of the no manipulations assumption, Macquarie's density test. Last, I'm going to present an empirical application of a regression discontinuity design to marking data by Brett Hollenbach and his colleagues. Okay, are you ready? Then let's get started. From birth to death, our life is affected by various score-based decisions. The most popular score is the SAT score. Students with SAT scores above a cutoff may have a higher chance to get admission to a flagship university than those with scores below the cutoff. And sometimes your annual income serves as a score for government policies. Stimulus checks were paid multiple times during this COVID pandemic, but not to all people. The checks were paid only for people whose annual income was lower than a cutoff. And for financing, the credit score is one of the key determinants to lower the rank. There is also a cutoff, and one usually gets a better rate if his or her credit score is above the cutoff. As in those examples, most policies are score-based. Each individual unit is evaluated and receives a score for policy. And one's eligibility is determined by whether the score is above or below the cutoff of the policy. A regression discontinuity method exploits the score-based structure to infer the causal effect of a policy. If a policy has an impact on an outcome, then the base score of the policy should be able to distinguish between policy recipients and non-recipients in terms of the outcome. That is, there will be a notable discrepancy or discontinuity in the outcome between those who are right above the cutoff and right below the cutoff. The discontinuity is sometimes referred to as a jump. For graphical illustration, let me introduce a study on the effect of attending flagship state university on earnings. This figure plots the SAT points and the enrollment rate for the flagship universities. X-axis is the deviation from the admission cutoff and Y-axis is the enrollment rate. And obviously, there is a big discrepancy at the zero of the deviation. The discrepancy makes the smoothing curve discontinued at the cutoff point, and the discontinuity looks like the jump of y axis variable, the enrollment rate. As evidence of a discrete assignment by continuous or admission, which is yes or no binary, was determined by the SAT score, which is continuous in the range from 400 to 1600. Now let's think about the economic benefit of attending Flemish University. 
if it is economically beneficial, there should be a jump of earnings in the plot of the S80 scores and earnings as well. This figure is the plot. X axis is the same, the deviation from the admission cutoff, and Y axis in this plot is the residual of earnings after controlling for potential confounding effects. Drawing a curve smoothing the points in the figure, it is found that the curve is discontinued exactly at the cutoff. That is, the earnings jump at the cutoff, and we can conclude that there is a total effect of attending flagship state university on earnings. A full definition of a regression discontinuity design is as follows. The basic idea behind the RLD design is that assignment to the treatment is determined either completely or partly by the value of the predictor being on either side of a fixed threshold. Let me graphically illustrate this definition. There is an outcome which may be affected by a predictor or a running variable, but there was an intervention or treatment that affected the outcome. And who was going to be treated? That is, the assignment to the treatment was determined by the running variable. And the assignment mechanism is that there is a fixed threshold or cutoff value, C, and if one's running variable was below the cutoff, there was no intervention. That is, the unit was an untreated control unit. But if one's running variable was above the cutoff, there was the intervention and the unit was treated, leading to a shift of the outcome. Then, the difference between the disconnected curves is the causal inference of the intervention. The RD sounds make sense, but the next question is, why do this instead of directly using the assignment? As in the flagship state university example, the assignment to the treatment is observed in data. Then, why do you need directly estimate the effect of the assignment? The reason is that there is no value of the running variable at which both the treated and the controlled are observed. Let me graphically illustrate it. All units below the cutoff were controlled, and all units above the cutoff were treated. This is problematic because there is no way to identify whether the effect on outcome was due to the treatment or due to the running variable itself. Thus, the regression discontinuity relies on an extrapolation. Stretching the curve of the controlled units to the above threshold region, we can make a prediction of what would happen without the intervention of the treated units. And Use the difference between the observed outcomes with the intervention and the predicted outcomes without the interventions as the estimate of the causal effect. In addition, RLD focuses only on the local around the threshold. For example, consider two students. One's S80 score was 700, but the other's score was 1,500. And the student with the high score entered a top university. And suppose that, after a long time, we observe that the student with the high score earns more than the one with the low score. And then, it is difficult to clearly identify the effect of the top university education from the effect of the higher intellectual ability because both effects may be significant. So, what about the students with right below cutoff score and right above cutoff score? They may be not that different from each other in terms of intellectual ability. But if the right above cutoff student earns more after a long time, 
We can conclude that the top university education may lead to the difference in earnings. So, RLD focuses only on the local or on the threshold. Units right above and right below the cutoff are highly likely similar in various dimensions, including the running variable, which leads to a more randomized comparison for causal inference. Now, I'm going to formally derive the estimate of the causal effect with the regression discontinuity design. This design is called the sharp RLD design. In the sharp RLD design, the assignment is deterministic. And that is, it was all decided by the running variable and unknown cut of value. For unit i, d is the assignment variable. d is equal to 1 if the running variable x is above the cutoff c. If below, d is 0. And next, let's derive the observed outcome. Suppose that the potential outcome without the treatment, y0, is given by a function of x, and the potential outcome with the treatment is given by y0 plus a constant delta. Then, the observed outcome is given by the switching equation, which is the same as the function plus delta times d. The sharp RD estimate is the estimate of what happens around the cutoff. Let's say the arrow from left to right is a pace right below the cutoff, and the arrow from right to left is a pace right above the cutoff. And then, the delta indicates the average observed outcome with the treatment of the right above cases minus the average observed outcome without the treatment of the right below case. Adding and subtracting the same doesn't make any change. We have the equation where the first part is the treatment effect and remaining part is the selection bias. The selection bias becomes zero if continuity is assumed, which means that the outcome without the treatment does not change as the running variable changes from the right below the cutoff to the right above the cutoff. In other words, the continuity assumption implies if the treatment were absent, the expected potential outcomes would not change. That is, those identities. The continuity assumption makes the sharp or the estimate of the causal effect delta unbiased for the right above cases, the right below cases, and the cases where the running variable is exactly the same as the current. This property holds only in a short range around the cutoff value, so the estimate is called the local average treatment effect. L -A -T -E. The sharp RD estimate of the causal effect can be obtained the following regression equation. The observed outcome Y is given by two terms of the running variable X, control variables, and an error. The first term of the running variable is the causal effect, that is, the causal discontinuity above the cutoff value C. Here, this i function is an indicator function for the assignment, which has 1 if the run variable x is above the cutoff and 0 otherwise. The second term is the function of the running variable. This captures the outcome expected with no interventions. This function can be nonlinear, that is, the function can be a constant equation, a linear equation a quadratic equation, and so on. There's another important assumption in an early design, no manipulations assumption. It is inherently assumed 
but very important to put it in front through an early design. The assignment is decided by the running variable, but what if the assignment rule is known in advance? There is a clear incentive agent to manipulate the assignment, and some or all agents are able to manipulate their running variable. For example, suppose that there were some students, they were able to fabricate this course, leaving no evidence, and they were willing to do so. Then what happens? The estimated student effect on earnings would be a mixed effect of the top university education and the manipulated scores. That is, if there were manipulations in the running variable, Randomization does not fall in the RD design, and the estimated effect may at least partially come from the manipulations. That is, the estimated effect may be mixed. So, it is necessary to check the possibility of manipulations for an RD design. And there is a simple falsification test to check the possibility. For example, suppose that there is a special stimulus check for poverty, and the cutoff is 14K of the annual income reported last year. Without any manipulations, the income distribution generally shows a smooth, continuous shape. But suppose that there are some people right above the cutoff, and they were able to fabricate their income, leaving no evidence, and so they did. Then, the density of people right above the cutoff decreases, and the density of people right below the cutoff increases, leading to a distribution disconnected at the cutoff like this figure. That is, if there were manipulations, discontinuity in the distribution of the running variable around the cutoff would be observed. McRary suggested the formal versions of the first education test, so it is called McRary's density test. Conceptually, it is the same as the graphical investigation of discontinuity in the distribution of the running variable as in the previous slide. First, compute the empirical density of the running variable in data. Second, investigate whether the density is discontinuous at the cutoff. And in all, all the density package provides a convenient function to draw the density of the running variable. It draws the empirical density plot based on local polynomial regression method. A short RD design is sometimes too restrictive because the assignment is deterministic. That is, all units above the cutoff should be treated. But in reality, it sometimes does not hold. All students above the cutoff do not attend the top university, and some students attend the top university even though their scores are below the cutoff. So, a relaxed version was suggested called a fuzzy LD design. In a fuzzy design, the assignment is probabilistic, not deterministic, and the jump is observed in the assignment probability at the cutoff. This figure graphically illustrates the difference between a sharp design and a fuzzy design. X-axis is a rubbing variable, and Y-axis is the probability of being pretty conditional on the running variable. The dotted line is for the sharp design, and the solid curve is for the fuzzy design. The sharp design. All units above the cutoff were treated and all of the others were controlled. 
So the probability of being treated is zero below the cutoff, and it is one above the cutoff. But in the fuzzy design, the probability of being treated smoothly increases as the running variable gets closer to the cutoff. And at the cutoff, the probability jumps and smoothly increases as the running variable increases. In marketing, regressive discontinuity has been used for various research problems. Because many marketing interventions, such as pricing and targeting, are based on thresholds of real or expected consumer and farm behaviors. As an example, I'm going to introduce Brett Hollenbeck and his colleagues' study on the relationship between online reviews and ad spending in the hotel industry. A good review sometimes plays a good ad. For example, this is an example review of Lounge 20 restaurant in Paris. I've never been to Paris, but the review makes me seriously consider this restaurant for my future travel to Paris. And the authors were interested in the substitution effect of online reviews on ad spending in the hotel industry. If there is the substitution effect, hotels with higher ratings may spend less for advertising than hotels with lower ratings. So the authors collected ad spending data at online reviews of hotels and used a sharp LD design to estimate the full effect of review ratings on ad spending. The ad spending is regressed on the rating related variable which is the running variable and the fixed effect. This is the term of the causal discontinuity. Above threshold is the variable indicating whether the average online review rating is above the cutoff value and beta 1 is the estimate of the causal effect. These two terms are the function of the running variable. The interaction terms allows for slope change at the cutoff, implying that below the cutoff, fx becomes beta 2 times x, but above the cutoff, it becomes beta 2 plus beta 3 times x. In the context of the study, the cutoff value is not explicitly known. So the authors estimated the regression with various values of the curve. This figure presents a graphical summary of the regression with various cutoff values. In most cases, discontinuity was found. And this table presents the estimation result. The blue box indicates the estimate of interest in the main model including all totals in the data. The estimate, negative 0.07, implies that an extra 0.5 in TripAdvisor's displayed radius causes hotels to spend about 7% less on advertising. And this confirms the substitution effect of online reviews on ad spending. No manipulation assumption is also tested. In the context of the study, there could be a strong incentive to manipulate the ratings upward and downward. For the ratings of old hotel, managers could be incentivized to do upward manipulations. And for the ratings of the competitors, managers might want to do downward manipulations. And this is the Macquarie's density test result. Around the cutoff, there is no evidence of manipulations in the distribution. All right, that's all I have in this lecture. After watching this lecture, please check out our website again for if there are additional readings and videos you required or strongly recommended, online quiz assignment, and hands-on exercise in our software.
Then, see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.